The planets have all been identified for a considerable amount of time, suggesting that humanity has studied the solar system, if not entirely, in great detail. Scientists were shocked to learn that our entire solar system, including the far-off Earth cloud located a light year from the Sun, is immersed in a massive bubble with a diameter of 1,000 light years. What is even more remarkable is that our Sun is practically at the center of this bubble. Are we really living in a huge bubble, and how does our solar system actually work in 1977? Rovers have been traveling on Mars for a while, and comets and asteroids have been almost counted by name. Less than a month separated the launches of Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, with Voyager 2 departing earlier and reaching the outermost point of our solar system owing to a different flight path. Six years later, both spacecraft discovered an extremely peculiar anomaly, interstellar space is typically thought of as a vacuum, but this is not entirely accurate, as matter still exists in the solar system despite the extremely low density. The average density of protons and electrons in the solar wind is between 3 and 10 particles per cubic centimeter, but it decreases with distance from the sun. The smallest density of space is found at the edge of the solar system, which is known as the heliopause. At this boundary, the flow of charged particles emitted by the sun, or in other words, solar plasma, drops to zero. The region between the Sun and the heliopause is known as the heliosphere, and it is a sort of bubble in which all of the planets of the solar system are submerged. At this boundary, the density of protons and electrons is 0.002 particles per centimeter, and calculations indicate that the density of particles in the interstellar space behind the heliopause should be 0.037 particles per centimeter. The density outside the solar system was found by the Voyager 2 instrument to be 0.039 particles per cubic centimeter at a distance of 119.7 astronomical units, or 17.9 billion kilometers, from the Sun. This finding nearly lined up with the calculations, but the strangeness started at a distance of 124.2 astronomical units, or 18.5 billion kilometers. There were 0.12 particles per cubic centimeter at the density. Why is our density rising? We'll discuss this in more detail later, but for now, let's talk about a bubble that is far bigger than the heliosphere so you can appreciate how smart the universe was to fit us into two bubbles at once and comprehend how they relate to one another. While images of deep space give the impression that it is full of clouds of interstellar dust and luminous gas, astronomers started to notice in the 1970s and 1980s that the galactic space around the Sun is different from this image, with the solar system appearing to hang in a nearly empty void. This year, researchers at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics CFA, conducted the most intricate computer simulations to create a three-dimensional reconstruction of space and time, demonstrating that, yes, we do actually exist in some sort of nothingness. According to calculations, the bubble formed about 14 million years ago. This required the explosion of about 15 supernovae over several million years, which pushed the interstellar gas outward with the pressure of light, creating a bubble-like structure with a dense surface at the boundary. The bubble is still growing in size today. When it first formed, it was expanding at about 60 miles per second, according to data collected by the European Space Agency's Gaia Space Observatory. At present, the bubble is still expanding at 4 miles per second on its surface. These findings indicate that the Sun and Earth are nearly in the center of this massive bubble, which they named the local bubble. Star formation occurs everywhere on the surface of the local bubble, and since the galaxy is full of these bubbles, it is possible that other stars, even those with planets like our own, are also in their local bubbles. Seven star formation regions, or dense molecular clouds, have been found where stars are formed. Interestingly the Sun was not at the center of our universe at first when these catastrophic explosions interestingly, Sun was far away from the occurred. About 1,000 light-years the butt is seen, away, an astrophysicist at the Joao of Alves, explained about 5 million years university as it orbited the center of galaxy Tnam, the Sun got almost right at the center off bubble. Oh this is consistent with estimates of radioactive iron isotope deposits from a supernova in the Earth's crust from other studies. The researchers suggest that there are probably more star formation bubbles in the Milky Way. 
research author and astronomer CFA Alice Goodman, who founded GLU, explains in her statement that statistically, the sun would not be near the middle of a huge bubble if they weren't spread all over the place. The local bubble is exactly the bubble we're in right now. She said we think the sun has probably gone through a lot of super bubbles in its history. The scientists compared the cosmos with Swiss cheese. Supernova explosions pierce the gaps in the universe, and new stars emerge at the margins of the holes left by dying stars. By identifying where the bubbles are located throughout the vastness of space, the research team hopes to map additional cosmic bubbles and obtain a complete three-dimensional depiction of their shape, position, and size. This will allow astronomers to put together how these bubbles function as star nurseries. How the bubbles communicate with one another and how the opening of the local bubble has changed the course of galaxies over time, such as the Milky Way. This is how the solar system is structured. The Sun lies at the center of the system, around which eight planets orbit. Neptune is the last planet, revolving around 4.45 billion kilometers, or 30 astronomical units, which is 30 times further from the Sun than the Earth. The Kuiper Belt, a group of small celestial bodies, lies behind Neptune and is made up primarily of Pluto, which has long been mistaken for a planet. The Kuiper Belt extends outward to approximately 55 astronomical units further at a distance of 125 to 135 astronomical units. There is a heliopause, which we've already described. Let us now explain why the density begins to increase at its boundary. It's because solar plasma collides with interstellar plasma. Imagine two streams colliding head-on at cosmic speeds. Of course, at the point of collision, the density increases. It's like a traffic jam. A chaos of particles, and behind this jam at a distance of 0.75 to 1.5 light-years, the Earth cloud spreads a spherical cloud of ice objects up to a trillion, which serves as a source of long-period comets. The interstellar wind already dominates here, but the Sun is still holding bodies in its gravitational field with its last strength. Of course, many of our viewers may ask the question, well, we're in a bubble that's huge by earthly standards, even in a double bubble local and heliosphere. Well, how does this affect our lives about that small bubble in the heliosphere? We can say unambiguously that thanks to it, thanks to the traffic jam that formed on its border, the Earth is reliably protected from high-energy cosmic particles rushing from the center of the galaxy. Our Sun revolves around the galactic center, making one revolution every 200 million years. This is known as a galactic year, and only 0.0008 of this year has passed since the appearance of man in its path. The Sun and all of its planets crossed not only bubbles but also accumulations of interstellar gas when the density of matter in space jumped hundreds of times. Currently, our Sun is almost halfway between the Sagittarius arm and the Perseus arm. Astrophysicist Miroslav Filipovich used the most recent Milky Way model to investigate what happened on Earth when the Sun crossed the galactic arms, where interstellar space has a much higher density. A relationship has been discovered between the Sun's crossing of these arms and five known mass extinction events, which occurred 415, 322, 300, 145, and 33 million years ago. Based on this, we can assume that the Sun is currently in a quiet harbor that is favorable for all living things, and we can consider ourselves extremely fortunate to have evolved when the Sun flew into the local bubble earlier. Alternatively, these two events may be related in some way, with the appearance of man and the Sun in a safe haven the local bubble science has no information about it, at least not yet, but we can definitely say that we observe such a colorful sky above our heads only due to the fact that we're practically in a void, the local bubble. If the space around us were denser, many stars would be invisible, and who knows if we would know about space and about the structure of the universe as much as now if we were literally in the dark. We can say that the local bubble is just a gift to humanity, which has entered the space age and is already trying to jump to the stars for an interstellar craft moving at subliminal speeds. The greatest threat is dust particles, which will simply grind the ship to powder during collisions. Even hypothetical concepts such as ships implying a frontal shield, but now it turns out that the cosmos seems to have taken care of us, it removed the dust in the vicinity of the sun, and as it were said, forward guys, the path to Alpha Centauri and Tau Ceti is open. Stay tuned for updates to keep up with the greatest achievements of mankind. Thank you for watching.